Hey everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're an Unreal Engine developer that uses Blender for your content creation, boy do I have an add-on for you. It's called, well, Blender for Unreal Engine. Pretty straightforward name, pretty straightforward in what it does. It makes it a lot easier to use Blender for your asset creation in Unreal Engine. Now, this news is actually coming care of Blender Nation. If you don't already visit Blender Nation, you should visit Blender Nation. It's probably the source for Blender news. Well, other than here for game dev news. Uh, but... Uh, they posted this link up here about the uh, new released uh, Blender for Unreal Engine add-on. It is completely free. It is available up on GitHub. It is licensed under the MIT license. The MIT license is pretty sweet as far as licenses go. Pretty much do what you wish with it. As you can see, this is a fresh uh, release. Basically, all of this just happened. Uh, and what it allows you to do, here you can see from the description, working with object packs for Unreal Engine can be complicated with Blender. That's why I created add-ons Blender for Unreal Engine. It simplifies the procedure of the export, allows you to export all of the assets of a scene at the same time, distributing them in a proper tree structure in correlation with the Unreal Engine pipeline. The socket and collision shapes is done directly in Blender. You can choose precisely the different animations that need to be exported. Also, the add-on includes a potential error checker to avoid problems while export or with exporting. And since the last version is possible to generate scripts for Unreal who will then import the assets or generate level sequencer. Now that scripts use something called uh, Blender for Unreal. We'll look at that in a second as well. Installation is dirt simple. Basically come on in here and grab one of the zip files under the release, specifically the most recent one. And we'll get back to that and ah hell let's do it now. So if you want to go ahead and install this guy, fire up your copy of Blender and save that zip file somewhere. Da -da -da -da. And then you simply go file and then user preferences, switch over to the add-ons tab right here. You're gonna go install add-on from a file, pick the location you installed it to. So in my case, my downloads. Uh, Blender for Unreal Engine, just grab that guy right there and just install add-on from file. Then you will see import export Blender for Unreal Engine shows up right there. Just click that tick box and it is good to go. And if you are done and you're going to want to consistently use this as opposed to just once, what you're gonna to wanna to do now is do a save user settings, click this button right here, and now that will persist. So the next time you load up Blender, that add-on is available to you. Speaking of that add-on, it is implemented as a tab, as you can see right here, Unreal Engine 4. Just click on that one and you have a plethora of options. We'll go very straightforward. You see I have my cube selected right here. I can pick how to export it, including export all the recursive children of it. Um, we've got properties if any of the uh, properties are uh, set. You can set your collisions and sockets. Uh, so I don't have any set up right now. And you can also pick the extensions or the naming convention to use for the export. You can pick what to export out. There's even support for um, sequencing of the camera. So you can do some pretty cool stuff out of here. And then once you're good to go, you just basically click export. Now that's not gonna work for me yet because I haven't saved my scene. So let's go ahead and save this guy. We'll save this as my desktop. And UE4 demo. So save the blend file like that. And now we'll go ahead and export like that. And you will see no exports found with, hmm, a sec. You know, let's do a recursive export. All right, so now we go here to the desktop. You'll see the exported folder here, your static mesh, and there is our queue. And if we go into the other folder, you will see scripts that can be used to actually import the scene that we just exported. So I am not getting into any kind of advanced details here at all. Obviously, if you've got, um, you know, a more complicated scene, armatures, multiple things to export, there's going to be a lot more to it. But now let's head on back over to the page. So that's the installation process and the usage process. It's as simple as dirt, basically. It's in the tools panel of Blender once it's been configured as an add-on. I didn't tell you that, but if you're not an avid Blender user, by the way, this panel over here, the tools panel, can be toggled off and on using the T key or with this little plus icon. It's just available right there. And then again, you should be able to find the tab Unreal Engine 4. Now in terms of how to actually go ahead and use this guy, well, the cool thing is it's documented. So you head on back over to the GitHub page. There is documentation. So here's how you go ahead and export out various things. So here you can see they're exporting three different meshes at the same time. Uh, the properties you can deal with. And then there's another tutorial on how to do that. And then uh, collisions and sockets configuration, how to set up animations and pick which ones to export out. 
And then here is your export process and done. Now on top of that, there's also tutorials for how to actually import the assets back into Unreal Engine. So in this case, if you brought in a static mesh, you use this process, skeletal mesh, you use this process, or animation, you use this process, but it should be in a directory structure and a setup manner that is very uh, friendly towards Unreal Engine. And the cool thing is, once again, this add-on is doing error checking on the Blender side. So what you're getting in Unreal Engine should work a bit better in Unreal Engine. Now, also, as I mentioned, so back here to the desktop, there are these two Python scripts that you can use to import your scene. So if you had a very complicated scene, this would probably be the way to go. Well, that is documented here. So you say import assets using Unreal Engine Python. Now, Unreal Engine Python is not out of the box. Basically, you can use it to run those scripts and they will bring all of your assets in. And you see here also there's instructions here on um, using the Blender camera with the Unreal Engine sequencer. So you can, you know, frame your shots, etc., as you wish, right in Blender for export out to Unreal Engine. Now, in terms of the um, Python script, this Unreal Engine Python, this is also an extension for Blender, but it's also available up on GitHub. So I will toss uh, this link, the uh, Blender Nation story, and the Unreal Engine for Python links all down below in the comments. So, you know, don't worry about paying attention up here. But this guy is available under the... MIT license as well, so very straightforward and good to go Python. And what this basically allows you to do is run various different versions of the Python VM directly inside of Unreal Engine, but it gives you access, or at least gives Python access to all of the Unreal Engine APIs. So you can do nice things like, you know, create a level importer that works from Blender into um, Unreal Engine. So that's basically it. Today we are looking at uh, Blender for Unreal Engine, a completely free MIT open source, um, ex basically a better exporter for getting your content from Blender into Unreal Engine. Now, of course, right now you can just use FBX and kind of get the same result, but going through that intermediate format always has some hiccups. And in this case, you're still ultimately generating FBX for the import. It's just you've got a validation layer on top. You've got that Python translation layer to make work, things work even better. So basically, it just makes the entire process a lot more seamless. Also gets the um, the directory hierarchy the way that Unreal Engine wants it with a naming convention uh, that you know is Unreal Engine friendly. And then on top of that, it allows you to do the collisions and camera sequencing directly within the Blender game engine. Very cool stuff. Uh, great work, Xavier150. And heads up to Blender Nation for the news. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.